you were discovered in a boxing ring, mm. and I know you went. You know, you were you had the skills to do teaching. You were boxing, etc. Um, if well, you, you could be a teacher, you got to yeah, be ready to right. box. Right there, you go. Right, <laughs> exactly. But like, if you weren't discovered that day, what do you think you'd be doing right now? It's interesting you say that. You know, I um, you know one of one of the things I uh, I really want to do um, a part I want to play is um, I, when I was a fighter. I mean, when I first got and my acting, uh, when I first got into Taxi, I would come back to New York and I would go to the gym I trained at, the Gramercy Gym on 14th Street and 3rd Avenue. It's not there anymore. It was right next to Luchow's, which was this famous restaurant that was there. Anyway, um, I used, there used to be a guy there. His name was Paddy Flood. And he sat next to the, he was an ex-fighter, ex he's a promoter and a manager, and he would sit next to the ring. Like, if this was the ring, there was a banquette over there, like from a restaurant mm -hmm. that they put there. And he would sit there all day, and, you know, he'd pontificate. Him. But when he would see me, he'd go, hey, actor, you better play a fighter before you have to play the manager, you know? So now I would love to play, I can't play a fighter anymore, but I would love to play a trainer or a fighter. Yeah. So what I did, what I've been trying to do, and this goes back to reinventing yourself as well. So what I tried to do is I've been writing a, a script. It's called the, the Hard Way. And what I did was I took the first, you know, I boxed for six years. So I took that six years before I got the, the part. Mm -hmm. And then I'm trying to imagine what would have happened to me had I not gotten the part. And unfortunately, I don't think it's like, you know, at the end, everybody's got <laughs> their hand up in the air. I think it's a sad, huh. I think it's a sad story because, you know, I boxed for three years. I boxed every day, five days a week. Every day I was in a ring, bang, boom. And, you know, boxing is like swimming. You know why? Because when you go swimming, you know how you get wet? <laughs> well, when you box, you get hit. That's yeah, just you can't get around it. And so it took, you take a lot of punishment. So what would, have that, what would I be like if that had been 10 years or 15 years? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, what we know about the, the damage that, you know, and, and the great fighters like Ali and, and Joe Lewis who all, all ended up like that, yeah. you know, with, with terrible damage to themselves from it. I think that's the story. I got a love interest mm -hmm. and um, she has to be there at the end. But, you know, I, I'm working on this. I got, it's called the hard way. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm so glad I asked that question. Yeah, sort of like where you would end I'm up. I'm working on it. Yeah. I'm working on it. Well, we yeah. look forward to that. I mean, can you believe this year is the 40th anniversary of the, you know, you know what I'm going to say, uh, the debut, the premiere, whatever you want to call it, it of week. Taxi. Yeah, it was just yeah. last week. It's interesting. Uh, 40 years. Uh, it, it doesn't seem possible. It's just the blink of an eye. And what's great is that we all, you know, we all still hang around together, uh, the guys from Taxi. I saw Chris yesterday. Um, it just, it's in a, you know, it's a touchstone in my life because, you know, I, uh, it, not, not obviously it changed my life. But, you know, I think about that a lot, why, how, how they treated me. You know, think about this for a second, right? So these actors, Danny, Judd, Mary Lou, Jeff Conaway, Andy, They've been knocking around for a long time. They're all looking for a show, right? Now they get this show. They get this really great show with the greatest writers. They're coming off the Mary Tyler Moore show with all these Emmys, and they get the best time slot on TV. It's right after the number one show. It's They got the best director. They got everything great. Everything. Oh, but uh, uh, just one thing. There's this fighter that we found in New York. He's never acted, but we're going to put him in the show. You know, and... They welcomed me with open arms. I mean, I really think, I wonder how I'd react now if somebody said that to me. If, by the way, when they said Josh, I was like, Josh Groban, really? He's going he's gonna, to, I, I was like, <laughs> you know, so, but they didn't. They just welcomed me with open arms and I was allowed to thrive. And not only that, but being on taxi, you know, we have a program here in the New York City at the Police Athletic League called PAL Acting. It's a teen acting program because when you teach a kid how to act, you teach a kid how to act. And, and the, what, you find, what we see is so much development through performance. Mm -hmm. While they're performing, they're developing because think about it. As an actor, you gotta listen. You gotta stand up straight. You gotta be present. You gotta be part of something bigger than yourself. You gotta drop your guard. All the things you have to do in life. And so through performance, you develop and I, Got that five years. It was like being in the best school of all time. You know, surrounded by unbelievable actors. And remember, the, the head of the show is Jim Brooks. He wrote Terms of Endearment. He wrote Good As It Gets. He, I mean, he's, you know, that's the kind of people you're around. And trust me, it's always about the people you're around. <laughs> <laughs>